Fraser and I travelled from Bristol to Geneva together and we hopped on a train. A couple of hours later we were in Grenoble uh, where we met up with Vincent and his daughter Norwen very kindly picked us up in her car and drove us up to Shamroos where we had time for a beer before the last lift so, up. day one or maybe day zero of the Gumball and we uh, meet Vincent and Fraser oh. and we are just doing a little hike in a gorgeous spot to Lac Robert um, or Lax Robert I think it is uh, where we're going to camp the night and hopefully have an epic flight tomorrow. He's a lax Robert. And we've got rather a big mountain just up there. Our first bit of wildlife. A bit of head bussing going on. That's the view looking south towards the massive de Taylor fir. Fortunately we've got clouds just forming continuously out in front of us, shading us from the, uh, the sunset. But not to worry, we're wrapped up well. Tonight's delicacies, vegetable hot pot. Here we are, and look who's just turned up. Uh, <laughs> Craig and Tom, after a bit of a hike up. Well, well done, guys. I'm glad to say the cloud more or less disappeared and we were treated to a lovely sunset. Well, it's a beautiful morning. Vincent and Tom. Tom and Craig joined us last night. Well, yesterday evening. Look at that. And it goes on. The trouble is, my body won't twist any further. And you're like, walking out and running. Big, so, big we've got a big group of gum ballers here. Yeah. Uh, Roger. Yeah. Roger. I'm not going to go through everyone. Pakistani doctor whose brother-in-law was a heart specialist and working like a I'm going to do it again. Hey, Brian. <laughs> we were originally planning to take off from there and fly up the east side of the Beldon, Belladon range, but there's quite a heavy inversion in the valley, which is uh, not really breaking yet. It's 11 o'clock. So most likely we're going to end up flying on the normal side and taking off, you know, half one, two-ish. Local lad Vincent uh, very nobly took off first to uh, see if it was working. And uh, after about five minutes, once we'd seen he was uh, maintaining and then even slightly going up, I followed. Um, and then Roger, and then others. Just a little note about this video. My GoPro 11 Mini was really playing up. Um, I didn't know about it at the time, or indeed for quite a while afterwards. But it wasn't recording sound on half the video clips, and there were some really weird um, warping effects going on, and a loss of stabilisation. It's since been replaced by GoPro, but uh, that's why this video is a little bit different to my last Gumball video. So anyway, I hope you like it. Moments will come, but not in pattern. Oh, I've written it all down and not looked once Close your eyes and it might not happen A 
All the mountains will be standing when we're done. So take me on an adventure. Let it be a golden one. I don't know much about the weather. So meet me in the morning sun. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm just gonna uh, loiter here for a bit. I'm up at 2,400 meters. Vincent's just got a bit stuck down there. Just wait and see how he gets on. Roger's had a nice climb, he's just rocketed up. Of the world. It's a bit odd around here, a bit lumpy and bumpy, the wind's a bit stronger. I'm trying to get onto Grand Dark. There. But it's quite sinky here. I wonder if we should have tried to cross there, but it is a windy valley that one. Just got to push on here. 20 toes flying as the air flows We were lighter than the lightest sky Go faster, no one is your master Nothing but us and time If I don't have you, love 
If I don't have you, love, then I don't have no love. So, hello, Albertville, and goodbye, Albertville. Heading for this slope now, and I've just noticed that Rod is somewhere up there at 2,000 meters, so soaring up the, soaring up the slope, I guess. Good to catch up with him. I'm hoping this slope will work. The other Omega went for the other side. I thought he was heading off in the distance. Jakob, Jakob, I'm climbing nicely on the, uh, you call it the northwest side. Um, I can see this, the chairlift and everything uh, with the big cloud over it. So uh, I'm just going to see how I get on. Uh, just, I see that Rod has just landed. Has he landed close to you? I thought Jakob had landed at the top here, with, um, so I looked around for him, but I couldn't find him. Uh, soon established, he had actually walked down to the little ski resort down there. So it was time for a little flight down to join him. This is a little ski resort we landed in. Les Sassis, I think it's called. But the uh, the takeoff, the mountain up there is called La Bizanne. So that's where we're taking off tomorrow. And I'm with Jakob, who flew here today, bit of, landed a bit before me. And we've got Rod coming to join us, who landed just a few k further on. And we got Matt Fidesz coming to join us too. So it's gonna be four of us, it's, it's great. Perfect, just how the gumball's meant to work. Well, look who's just turned up. Fresh from deepest, darkest Africa, we got Rod. Yeah. He did well, we've got a lift uh, along the road up to here, so that's good. And we're just having some food. Matt's hopefully coming in half an hour or less than that now with some beer. So it's going to be quite a little party. So sunset was a while ago. We're enjoying the peace and quiet of an alpine village. Oh, we just missed YMCA. We got Matt here. Rod and Jakob is just uh, 
down there, a bit more stealthy than us guys. <laughs> but it's dark now, no one's gonna see us. Yeah, that restaurant is rocking out there. Well, we went to sleep last night with the sound of the disco. And we woke up this morning to the sound of thunder to the south, but we haven't had rain yet. We've got a new recruit to the gumball. The local farmer. Having an animated conversation with Rod about Africa. But the sky is clearing to the to the west, so that's good news. Well, one in France and one in a rather fine patisserie. Yeah, no surprise, the pan of chocolates have all gone. After our petit déjeuner, Matt headed back to Annecy area on his motorbike, whilst Rod and Jakob and I took the chairlift up to the top of Mont Bizan. So we've just been chatting with Phil there, who runs a school here, or is part of the school. And these kids are on a, like a summer camp, and this is their second flight. <laughs> it's like, we're at 2,000 meters here, the second flight, they're going up. <laughs> and then they're landing just down there. <laughs> Incredible. We mooshed around for a couple of hours, uh, enjoying the entertainment, having a bit of food. And then by two o'clock, we reckon it was okay to launch on the northwest side. The forecast wasn't great, but our plan was to head up towards Passy or and hopefully land on the Varan and camp up there for the night. But as you'll see, plans don't always well go quite to plan. Last night, the ski resort came up at 2300 and it's uh, 20 past two. Okay, so push on to the next cloud. Nice if there was a bit of lift under this. Landscape up here, Aravi, Montjoly up there. For sure. There's a nice climb around here somewhere. Two and a half to three, but there is a stronger course. So I've had a change of thought. The sky looks better over that way, I think. So I'm gonna try something completely different. But at the moment, I'm sinking like a brick. Sweet soaring here. Mont Blanc Massif up there in the cloud. But I'm thinking down that way to my left. So, so, for 
Gloves on. What's behind here? <laughs> oh my god. Holy moly. I'm noticing the wind is starting to pick up and ideally I would have dived off to the right but um, as you can see I had a danger area showing up on Fly Sky High uh, which actually turns out isn't, shouldn't be there. Just had a bit of rock and roll, just a bit of air coming over there. Should get sheltered soon. Unfortunately I didn't find any shelter and uh, if anything the wind picked up more. Okay, coming into the land here. It's getting a bit too boisterous. It looked like it was all going to go well, I'd make a nice smooth landing, but uh, gust of wind came, picked me up again, and after a few attempts, I ended up. Um, I don't know really exactly what happened, but I uh, just made the wrong inputs at the wrong time. Um, thought I was going to land here, but swinging around, putting left brake on, then right brake, and eventually end up landing, but then getting dragged onto those rocks. And they ended up here. Not ideal. Um, glider was undamaged. Uh, unfortunately, I cut my leg. I packed up my glider, bandaged my leg, and then started walking. And uh, this next video is about an hour and a quarter later and it, you can see it's pretty windy. The sound didn't come out on the clip at all. But it was a lovely walk down, even though it did take about three hours. On the way I met this very nice couple, Patrick and Olga, who were doing the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, 
on foot. And uh, I took some pictures of them, they took some pictures of me, and it was nice to have a bit of company on the, on the walk uh, down as far as, as far as they went. Well, I have arrived in Cormaya. It's a very pretty place. Look at this. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm going to try and get a bus to Chamonix, I think. So I was waiting at the bus station, uh, about to get on the bus to Chamonix, when I realised, having spoken to my good friend Gavin Foster, that Chamonix Hospital uh, is actually closed overnight uh, in the off-peak season, so I ended up getting a bus to Aosta and uh, went to the hospital there where they did an amazing job. They stitched it up and I had a comfy bed, a small room and uh, quite uh, fantastic um, service and, and treatment there, so I'm very grateful to them. Once I've been discharged from hospital the next morning, I found a nice park to uh, lay out my glider and just check it for any damage. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't. Um, packed it up, had a very nice wander around the town, taking in the sights, eating and drinking, uh, before catching the bus to Milano Malpensa Airport. Um, and I flew home early the next day. My leg healed really well and Less than three weeks later, during which time I had a really nice 216 kilometer golf flight and my daughter's wedding, I was back. And that included an amazing flight on the first day through the heart of the Eccling Mountains, just unforgettable. So, watch out for part de coming soon. <laughs>